I got really inspired today. Um, I got a lot of hits thanks to being uh, retweeted by uh, the good folks at Ableton today. Uh, so I got you know really psyched to, to kind of show you another really good Max for Live tutorial. I, I think it's a really good tutorial. We'll see what you think of it. Um, basically what you see in front of you here is a quad panner and unfortunately I don't have a really great way to even test it here at home because I only have a stereo setup but at work uh, we've done a bunch of events where we've done you know four uh, quad you know kind of quad you know speaker in each corner kind of thing and, and even more than that so I wanted to show you a little bit of how to use the live object model and the, the API to actually talk to live and control parameters and uh, also to you know kind of implement this this quad panner so let me close this up for a second here so you can kind of see what's going on I'm going to save what I've been up to here um, and oh I don't want to save that either I got a bunch of stuff just open from preparing this don't save that and don't save that okay so you'll see here this is my setup I've got a I've got four returns and that's key to it right um, and each one of these returns would normally be sent to an external out and it'd be like one, two, three, and four. Okay? Not stereo channels, because it'd just be like one uh, external out two, because I'm 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 gonna basically assume that I'm gonna take four channels and just, you know, uh, ones in each corner, so I, I'm not stereo anymore. So each one of these is just one. Now each track, I've got two pa two of my panners on on these two tracks right now, and you'll see this this little guy down here. Um, so what'll happen? I'll click on each one of them, and I'll start them off like in the corner there. So you'll see A, B, C, and D. Those are the corners of my room or my speaker locations. As I move from A to B, let's see uh, the uh, guy over here change, right? A to B, and then to C and to D, so I can go around the corners, or I can kind of move into the center, and you'll see they'll all be kind of halfway or so, right? Or quarter away. This is a constant power um, pan. So what that means is, you know, if you're in the, the middle, everything always adds up to one, right? So there's that guy's at full, they, they're both at half, they add up to one, that guy's at one. You know, so the total power is always just one. So when you're in the center, everybody's actually a quarter. If you're over to the side, two guys are at half. Um, there's some fancy ways to do it. I'm gonna leave that for another day. That's a whole nother science. So uh, I just wanna show you kind of the basics here and, and how things are done live. So let me pop this open. Um, like I said, it's uh, the key thing is you see it open in uh, presentation mode here. I'm gonna switch to patch mode. And we're gonna zoom in a bit. The key thing about this is uh, that we are, you know, really kind of looking at the um, the Max for Live uh, object model and kind of what's going on in there. And you have to have four tracks already set up. Uh, pretty much, it, it seems to be pretty good at error handling in here. This isn't like, like a super complete thing. It's just, you know, to kind of get you going. So uh, it's a Max for Live device uh, with uh, it's an audio device. I assumed, you know. The nice thing about audio devices, you can more or less put it on any any track. So each one of these kind of takes care of it, care of its own. So when it loads up, I have this load bang. That means it's like, okay, trigger this action when everybody gets started. And we'll look. We have four of these kind of things going on. It's kind of divided up one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. And then I have my panner, my my little control in the middle. So let's look at each one of these things. So I'm using the live path. Uh, to to uh, identify to live what it is I want to control or want or what I want to look at, so you see path and that's just I'm setting up a message here. This dark gray box is a is a Ableton uh, excuse me a Max uh, message box. So I say this device so this device that I'm in canonical parent so that gives me the track that this device lives on, and then it goes back down again. So I kind of go up to the track and then back down to another device, the mixer device. That's a special device that gives me my volume, my sends, uh, my panning, all that kind of stuff. So I say, uh, this device, canonical parent, mixer device, sends, and then I give the send number. And my assumption here is that you have four sends, zero, one, two, three. So A is zero, B is one, C is two, D is three, right? So that happens, it gets loaded, that bangs out, sets up a live path, and that's gonna give me um, 
uh, it's going to ask, you know, basically, uh, it's going to set up the ID, bang through here, get the value. So I, I query the live object. This uh, ID is going to come down through here, and then this get value message is going to is going to happen. And meanwhile, as it's doing it, it uses this trigger, which is a bang and uh, two values here. I believe those are I's for integers. Um, so the the ID gets sent down to this live object for later on. It also gets sent to this live object, and it gets sent to this uh, to bang this message out. So this happens. It gets set up. Nothing else happens down there. It just sets it. This sets the live object. Then the get value is triggered. Uh, it's going to look when it comes through here. Uh, let's let's do a little uh, live stuff here. Okay, new. I hit and whoops. Okay, a new object. I'm going to say prepend set, and then I'm going to throw a little message box in there. All right, and we will this down. I use this just like a little debugging statement here so I can see what's going on. So I see what's coming out of my live object. Let's get back out of there. Okay, so you see it reports back a message, value 0.245. So that's the, the value of the send right now on that track. And as I move it around, uh, well, if, I, if everything was going, it would actually all loop around and that would happen again. So you see if I've changed it, I've changed it. So that, that happens there. Uh, so this route value, basically all that does is it kind of strips the value part out. It says, okay, if you have a message that starts with value, route it out here. And so the 0.37, you know, that out here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Switching to pat. Okay, let me uh, take this and I'm going to put it down here. Let's see what happens. Oops. Put it again. Okay, now I just get the value. And that's all I want to do, send that to the slider. And originally I was going to show these sliders in my uh, my device as well, which is why I put them there, the live sliders. But then I decided, well, I like this this kind of XY pad better instead, so I just kind of bypassed that whole thing. So okay, so you see now I, I get just the value of the send coming through here, and it sets my slider up. Um, and then the value that comes through uh, is going to ultimately, there's a little error checking going on here. I clip it, make sure it's between the value of 0 and 1. Um, there's also a, a, a little, this was, you know, some of this was cut and pasted from one of the original um, uh, Max for Live abstractions. And it allowed you to have like an overall setting. So say I wanted to put a constant gain on everybody, I could, I could bring it in there, you know, attach it to, the, to each one of those and give me a constant gain. But I'm not using that right now. Basically, all you have to really know is that the value comes through here and uh, you know, it, ultimately goes through the slider value and then the set uses the value in there this is already the ID has already been set up so it says set value of the object for that ID object the value gets set right easy now there's four of them like I said so you see you can see a over there you know goes to one B goes to one D goes to one and C goes to one uh, I guess maybe I could have been done them A, B, C, and D, but you get the idea. Now, so the trickiest thing you'll, you'll notice is is kind of what's going on in here, and it, it is a little bit gnarly. Um, a little bit, I don't know, gnarly is that a good word? It's it's just a little, you know, kind of uh, uh, hairy in there. Um, basically, the first thing this uh, this X Y pad likes to be integers, so I, I set it up to be zero to one hundred. And uh, so I have to divide it by 100 to get my 0 to 1 value. And then I have, if I was just left and right, all, one of them would just be you know, 0 to 1. The other one I'd be invert to be 1 to 0. And this, this is, if you see my other tutorials, I use this subtract from 1, but inverse of that to get my, you know, one of the signals is flipped. So if we looked like down this path, this would be, okay, regular comes through here. That means B would get set to 1. And then A would be flipped, inverted, and kind of comes through here and gets set to zero. So can you kind of follow that that path? Here's my divided by. I ignore a little bit of what's going on because it gets tricky because of the quad. But normally this value comes in here, and it gets one side of the channel, and that's and then the flipped side, which goes through this negative one, this minus one, gets sent to the other one. Now if you look at C and D, I can follow a similar path through the same guy. Right, one of these guys is my my vertical, and the other one's my horizontal. Um, 
so we'll see. Flip it back into edit mode, you'll see horizontal value, vertical value. It's not just, you know, uh, I, I, and everybody's affected by horizontal. It depends kind of where you are. So I have to do a little bit of, of multiplying in there to, to kind of set it to everybody. So here, look. So now this goes through. Uh, it also, this is going to come through here and get sent to D, my normal version of that. You can follow that path, right? Goes to D. And the inverted version, it goes through and through here, goes to C. So kind of in your, in your middle case, you can see like basically the same thing is going to A and C and B and D. They kind of move similarly if I just move this way. But now it gets tricky as things move this way, because now I also have to flip between A and B and C and D. And that's where this side comes in. And I basically have a multiplier in here that, you know, as we follow it now, you'll see the inverse gets sent for A and B, and the normal version of it uh, multiplies out my uh, C and D. So this way, the front to back, you know, they get multiplied by a, a value depending on how far up and down we are. You know, one guy gets uh, the normal value, the other guy gets the inverse of that. So that's that's what's going on. So it's not really as, as scary as all that, right? So like I said, you know, front and back and side to side. And these are all basically the same. Each one, I set up a path, sends two, sends three. All this is the same, you know, it gets the path, um, sets the object ID, comes through, gets a value, sets a value, and gives me a con convenient way to kind of inject a new value into what's going on. That's you're going to think of that as basically I have the get and the set, and I intercept it or I inject my new value into there, and that kind of gets pushed, pushed throughout. Uh, you know, this isn't like super, you know, uber complete. You can add lots of stuff to this and have, you know, observers and all that kind of stuff. So that as you as you tweak the knobs on the on the patch, uh, it would all change as well. But uh, it 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 does a pretty good job. You know, it's, it's uh, pretty straightforward in terms of trying things out. Like I said, you know, you can see it all change in there. And if I play a sound, say I have you know, something playing on that track, let's turn that down a little bit. You'll see if I select this track and move my pan around. Right. Everybody gets some. C gets some. B gets some. A gets some. Yeah. Move it all around. There you have it. A simple quad panner. And like I said, you know, in the center, everybody's getting quarter value. So it's a simple quad panner. It gives you a little bit of a feeling for a you know, different type of Max for Live uh, device and also how to get into the. Uh, the live API object model a little bit more. All right, take care, have a good night, and uh, knock yourselves out. Take care.